In this video, we're going to continue discussing meiosis. In the first video, we talked about how cells go from a, an initial diploid cell to haploid cells. For us humans, those would be haploid gametes. In this video, I want to go back to the process and discuss why there might be such a genetic variety in the different gametes that are being produced. There are really two main processes that we're going to discuss here, independent assortment and crossing over. So we'll start with independent assortment. Both of them occur during meiosis one. And the key to the, to the idea that we get variety in meiosis is due to the side-by-side -side lining up of homologous pairs, these guys right here. Um, these are homologous to each other. The homologous pairs um, lining up side-by-side. -side. And the idea is that there really is no organization in the nucleus um, when the, when the uh, DNA is still in chromatin form, copying itself, packing up into sister chromatids form, um, those, those chromosomes will be brought side by side in a random way, and you'll get different results depending on how they happen to line up. So if this cell right here were to go through meiosis 1, and then meiosis two, and you can kind of imagine the gametes being in between those lines. You can see that, that maybe those combinations of alleles would be passed on to the next generation. But we could easily imagine a, a diploid cell going through the process again, and maybe during meiosis one, they happen to line up the homologous pairs this way. So uh, all I did here is I flipped the Ds, the red homologous pair at the top. And if I were to split once again, homologous pairs in meiosis 1, sister chromatids in meiosis 2, then I would end up with this particular combination of alleles in the gametes. And I hope you notice that it's different from the first um, division. And we could continue. In this case, I flip the R's, the blue homologous pairs, and I get yet a slightly different combination of alleles in my overall gametes. And so if we were to try and take this idea and, and sort of come up with a broader definition of the concept, I would want to say that it's due to this side-by-side -side lineup of homologous pairs in meiosis 1. And it's the idea that, that each pair is independent of the other pairs. They don't sort of look up and down to see which way the other pairs are lining up. They're just brought side-by-side -side and each pair can line up two different ways. So that's independent assortment, and then there's this other event called crossing over that also occurs during meiosis one. That also happens to take advantage of this side-by-side -side lining, um, lining up of the homologous pairs. And it's kind of hard for me to show on this PowerPoint here, but the idea is that sometimes they get uh, brought so close together that the inner chromatids can actually overlap at the tips, and they might even exchange their entire segments. So whatever genes happen to be located very close to the tips might actually exchange their alleles just on the inner chromatids. So that's what I tried to show right there. And if just kind of a very small piece of the tips happens to exchange, then in meiosis one and meiosis two, when the divisions occur, notice that all four of my gametes now this time are slightly different from each other. Sometimes it's kind of random how much of the tips exchange. If I were to show um, perhaps um, uh, the crossing over again, maybe these two homologous pairs are brought together and more of the tips um, overlap and more of the genes um, or alleles switch, then perhaps I get even more different results. So an, an independent assortment and crossing over are sort of separate processes. So if both of them create variety, then we're left with gametes that really can have all kinds of different ways of passing on half of your genetics. So if I were to once again try to define crossing over, I would say that it's again due to the side-by-side -side lining up in meiosis one. And it's this idea that the inner chromatids only of the homologous pairs are switching segments. I just um, want to finish the video by kind of emphasizing why none of this ever happens in mitosis. Remember that in mitosis, we just create a lineup where the homologous pairs are never brought side by side. And so um, we're only splitting the sister chromatids and, and there's only one way to line these up, all of these sister chromatids, and thus we only get exact copies. So mitosis serves its purpose with its lineup, and so does meiosis with its lineup in meiosis 1.